The Mercator world map of 1569 is titled Nova et Octa Orbis Terrae Descriptio ad Usum Navigantium Emendate Accommodata Renaissance Latin for New and more complete representation of the terrestrial globe properly adapted for use in navigation. The title shows that Gerardus Mercator aimed to present contemporary knowledge of the geography of the world and at the same time correct the chart to be more useful to sailors. This correction, whereby constant bearing sailing courses on the sphere rum lines are mapped to straight lines on the plane map, characterizes the Mercator projection. While the map's geography has been superseded by modern knowledge, its projection proved to be one of the most significant advances in the history of cartography, inspiring map historian Nordenskiel to write. The master of Rupemen stands unsurpassed in the history of cartography since the time of Ptolemy. The projection heralded a new era in the evolution of navigation maps and charts and it is still their basis. The map is inscribed with a great deal of text. The framed map legends or cartouches cover a wide variety of topics, a dedication to his patron and a copyright statement, discussions of rum lines, great circles and distances, comments on some of the major rivers, accounts of fictitious geography of the North Pole and the Southern Continent. The full Latin texts and English translations of all the legends are given below. Other minor texts are sprinkled about the map. They cover such topics as the magnetic poles, the prime meridian, navigational features, minor geographical details, the voyages of discovery and myths of giants and cannibals. These minor texts are also given below. A comparison with world maps before 1569 shows how closely Mercator drew on the work of other cartographers and his own previous works, but he declares Legend 3 that he was also greatly indebted to many new charts prepared by Portuguese and Spanish sailors in the Portolan tradition. Earlier cartographers of world maps had largely ignored the more accurate practical charts of sailors, and vice versa, but the age of discovery, from the closing decade of the 15th century, stimulated the integration of these two mapping traditions. Mercator's world map is one of the earliest fruits of this merger. Topic. Extant copies and facsimiles Mercator's 1569 map was a large planisphere, i.e. a projection of the spherical Earth onto the plane. It was printed in 18 separate sheets from copper plates engraved by Mercator himself. Each sheet measures 33 times 40 cm and, with a border of 2 cm, the complete map measures 202 times 124 cm. All sheets span a longitude of 60 degrees. The first row of six sheets cover latitudes 80 degrees north to 56 degrees north, the second row cover 56 degrees north to 16 degrees south, and the third row cover 16 degrees south to 66 degrees south. This latitude division is not symmetric with respect to the equator, thus giving rise to the later criticism of a Eurocentric projection. It is not known how many copies of the map were printed but it was certainly several hundred. Despite this large print run, by the middle of the 19th century there was only one known copy, that at the Bibliothèque Nationale de France. A second copy was discovered in 1889 at the Stadt Bibliothèque of Breslau along with maps of Europe and Britain. These three maps were destroyed by fire in 1945 but fortunately copies had been made before then. A third copy was found in a map collection Mapai Geographiae Vitistae from the archives of the Amerbach family which had been given to the library of the University of Basel. The only other complete copy was discovered at an auction sale in Luzerne in 1932 and is now in the map collection of the Maritium Museum Rotterdam. In addition to the complete copies there is a single page showing the North Atlantic in the Mercator Atlas of Europe in the British Library. Many paper reproductions of all four maps have been made. Those at full scale, providing access to the detail and the artistry of Mercator's engraving, are listed next. 
Images of the Basel, Paris, and Rotterdam impressions can be found online. Topic: <laughs> Basel map. The Basel map is the cleanest of the three extant versions. It is called the three-strip version because it is in three separate rows rather than a single assembled sheet. It was photographically reproduced at a reduced scale by Wilhelm Kruken in 1992. More recently, 2011, he has produced a full-scale and full-sized 202 times 124 centimeters reproduction of the map along with a five-volume account in German covering all aspects of Mercator's work. Medium resolution scans of the separate sheets and a composite of all 18 scans are accessible as follows. Topic: Paris map. The Paris copy is a single combined sheet that came into the possession of the Bibliothèque Nationale from the estate of Julius Klaproth (1783–1835). The map is uncolored, partially borderless and in poor condition due to repeated exhibitions during the 19th century. It was reproduced by Edmé François Jomard between 1842 and 1862 as part of a collection of 21 facsimile maps. Very few copies of this facsimile are known. The Bibliothèque Nationale has put a digital image of their copy into the public domain in the form of 13 separate images. The images do not correspond exactly with the 18 original sheets, they are in three rows of different heights with five, four, four images respectively. The zoomable images permit examination of small sections of the map in very great detail. These are the only online images at a high enough resolution to read the smallest text. Topic: <inaudible> Breslau map. Immediately after its discovery in 1889, the Breslau map was described by Heyer, who initiated copies in multiple sheets for the Berlin Geographical Society in 1891. Forty years later, in 1931, a further 150 copies were issued by the Hydrographic Bureau. Topic: <inaudible> Rotterdam map. This copy in the Maritime Museum Rotterdam is in the form of an atlas constructed by Mercator for his friend and patron Werner von Jimnich. It was made by Mercator in or shortly after 1569 by dissecting and reassembling three copies of his original wall map to create coherent units such as continents or oceans or groups of legends. There are 17 non-blank colored pages which may be viewed online and zoomed to a medium resolution, much lower than that of the French copy at the Bibliothèque Nationale. In 1962, a monochrome facsimile of this atlas was produced jointly by the curators of the Rotterdam Museum and the cartographic journal Amago Mundi. The plates are accompanied with comprehensive bibliographic material, a commentary by Van T. Hoff and English translations of the Latin text from the Hydrographics Review. More recently, in 2012, the Maritime Museum produced a facsimile edition of the Atlas, with an introduction by Shord de Meer. Topic. World and regional maps before 1569 Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Principal features of the 1569 Mercator map Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Mercator's projection In Legend 3 Mercator states that his first priority is, "...to spread on a plane the surface of the sphere in such a way that the positions of places shall correspond on all sides with each other, both insofar as true direction and distance are concerned and as correct longitudes and latitudes." 
He goes on to point out the deficiencies of previous projections, particularly the distortion caused by the oblique incidence of parallels and meridians which gives rise to incorrect angles and shapes, therefore he adopts parallel meridians and orthogonal parallels. This is also a feature of 16th century plane charts, equirectangular projections, but they also have equally spaced parallels. In Legend 3, Mercator also emphasizes the distortion that this gives rise to. In particular, the straight lines emanating from the compass roses are not rum lines, so that they do not give a true bearing. Nor was it straightforward to calculate the sailing distances on these charts. Mariners were aware of these problems and had evolved rules of thumb to enhance the accuracy of their navigation. Mercator presents his remedy for these problems. We have progressively increased the degrees of latitude towards each pole in proportion to the lengthenings of the parallels with reference to the equator. The resulting variation of the latitude scale is shown on the meridian at 350 degrees east of his map. Later, Edward Wright and others showed how this statement of Mercator could be turned into a precise mathematical problem whose solution permitted the calculation of the latitude scale, but their methods had not been developed at the time of Mercator. All these methods hinge on the observation that the circumference of a parallel of latitude is proportional to the cosine of the latitude, which is unity at the equator and zero at the poles. The length of a parallel, and hence the spacing of the parallels, must therefore be increased by a factor equal to the reciprocal of the cosine i.e. the secant of the latitude. Mercator left no explanation of his own methods but, as long ago as 1541, he had demonstrated that he understood how to draw rum lines on a globe. It has been suggested that he drew the rums by using a set of metal templates for the seven principal compass points within each quadrant, as follows. Starting at the equator draw a short straight line segment, at say 67.5 degrees east by northeast. Continue as far as a meridian separated by only two or three degrees of longitude and mark the crossing point. Move the template to that point and repeat the process. Since the meridians have converged a little the line will bend up a little generating a rum which describes a spiral on the sphere. The latitude and longitude of selected points on the rum could have then been transferred to the chart and the latitude scale of the chart adjusted so that the rum becomes a straight line. There has been no shortage of proposed methods for the construction. For example, Hollander analyzed 14 such hypotheses and concluded that Mercator may have used a judicious mix of mechanical transference and numerical interpolations. However he proceeded, Mercator achieved a fairly accurate, but not perfect, latitude scale, since the parallels shrink to zero length as they approach the pole they have to be stretched by larger and larger amounts. Correspondingly the parallel spacing must increase by the same ratio. Mercator concludes that, "...the chart cannot be extended as far as the pole, for the degrees of latitude would finally attain infinity." Legend 6. That is, the reciprocal of the cosine of the latitude become infinite. He therefore uses a completely different projection for the inset map of the north polar regions, an azimuthal equidistant projection. It took many years for Mercator's projection to gain wider acceptance. The following gallery shows the first maps in which it was employed. General acceptance only came with the publication of the French sea atlas, Le Neptune François. At the end of the 17th century, all the maps in this widely disseminated volume were on the Mercator projection. Topic. Distances and the Organum Directorium In Legend 12 Mercator makes careful distinction between great circles plaga and rum lines directio, and he points out that the rum between two given points is always longer than the great circle distance, the latter being the shortest distance between the points. 
However, he stresses that over short distances which he quantifies the difference may be negligible and a calculation of the rum distance may be adequate and more relevant since it is the sailing distance on a constant bearing. He gives the details of such a calculation in a rather cumbersome fashion in Legend 12 but in Legend 10 he says that the same method can be applied more readily with the Organum Directorium, the Diagram of Courses, Sheet 18, shown annotated here. Only dividers were used in these constructions but the original maps had a thread attached at the origin of each compass rows. Its use is partially explained in Legend 10. To illustrate his method take A at 20 degrees north, 33 degrees east and B at 65 degrees north, 75 degrees east. Plot the latitude of A on the left-hand scale and plot B with the appropriate relative latitude and longitude. Measure the azimuth alpha, the angle MAB, it can be read off the compass scale by constructing OP parallel to AB, for this example it is 34 degrees. Draw a line OQ through the origin of the compass rose such that the angle between OQ and the equator is equal to the azimuth angle alpha. Now find the point N on the equator which is such that the number of equatorial degrees in on is numerically equal to the latitude difference 45 degrees for AM on the unequal scale. Draw the perpendicular through N and let it meet OQ at D. Find the point E such that OE equals OD, here approximately 54 degrees. This is a measure of the rum line distance between the points on the sphere corresponding to A and B on the spherical Earth. Since each degree on the equator corresponds to 60 nautical miles the sailing distance is 3240 nautical miles for this example. If B is in the second quadrant with respect to A then the upper rows is used and if B is west of A then the longitude separation is simply reversed. Mercator also gives a refined method which is useful for small azimuths. The above method is explained in Legend 12 by using compass roses on the equator and it is only in Legend 10 that he introduces the Organum Directorium and also addresses the inverse problems, given the initial point and the direction and distance of the second find the latitude and longitude of the second. Mercator's construction is simply an evaluation of the rum line distance in terms of the latitude difference and the azimuth as s equals phi b minus phi a sec alpha display style s equals phi underscore b phi underscore a sec alpha if the latitude difference is expressed in arc minutes then the distance is in nautical miles in later life Mercator commented that the principles of his map had not been understood by mariners but he admitted to his friend and biographer, Walter Gimm, that the map lacked a sufficiently clear detailed explanation of its use. The intention expressed in the last sentence of Legend 10, that he would give more information in a future geographia, was never realized. Topic. Prime meridian and magnetic pole In Legend 5 Mercator argues that the prime meridian should be identified with that on which the magnetic declination is zero, namely the meridian through the Cape Verde Islands, or alternatively that through the island of Corvo in the Azores. He cites the varying opinions of the Dieppe mariners. The prime meridian is labeled as 360 and the remainder are labeled every 10 degrees eastwards. He further claims that he has used information on the geographical variation of declination to calculate the position of the single magnetic pole corresponding to the two possible prime meridians. They are shown on sheet 6 with appropriate text. For good measure he repeats one of these poles on sheet 1 to emphasize the overlap of the right and left edges of his map, see text. He does not show a position for a south magnetic pole. The model of the Earth as a magnetic dipole did not arise until the end of the 17th century, so between AD 1500 and that era the number of magnetic poles was a matter for speculation, variously 1, 2 or 4. 
Later, he accepted that magnetic declination changed in time, thus invalidating his position that the prime meridian could be chosen on these grounds. Topic. Geography In his introduction to the Amago Mundi facsimile edition T. Hoff gives lists of world maps and regional maps that Mercator may well have seen, or even possessed by the 1560s. A more complete illustrated list of world maps of that time may be compiled from the comprehensive survey of Shirley. Comparisons with his own map show how freely he borrowed from these maps and from his own 1538 world map and his 1541 globe. In addition to published maps and manuscripts Mercator declares Legend 3 that he was greatly indebted to many new charts prepared by Portuguese and Spanish sailors in the Portolan traditions. It is from an equitable conciliation of all these documents that the dimensions and situations of the land are given here as accurately as possible. Earlier cartographers of world maps had largely ignored the more accurate practical charts of sailors, and vice versa, but the age of discovery, from the closing decades of the 15th century, brought together these two traditions in the person of Mercator. There are great discrepancies with the modern atlas. Europe, the coast of Africa and the eastern coast of the Americas are relatively well covered but beyond that the anomalies increase with distance. For example, the spectacular bulge on the western coast of South America adapted from Richelli's 1561 Orbis Descriptio replaced the more accurate representation of earlier maps. That mistake disappears for good with the Bleu map of 1606. The Mediterranean basin shows errors similar to those found in contemporary maps. For example, the latitude of the Black Sea is several degrees too high, like in the maps made by Diogo Ribeiro in Seville in the 1520s. However, in Mercator's map the longitude of the entire basin is exaggerated by about 25%, contrary to the very accurate shape depicted by Ribeiro. The Phantom Islands of Freiland and Brazil in the North Atlantic persist in the maps of the period even though they were in waters readily accessed by European sailors. He does show a strait of Anian between Asia and the Americas as well as N.W. and Ney passages to the Spice Islands of the East, this he justifies on his studies of the ancient texts detailed in Legend 3 for as yet these were unexplored regions. The bizarre representation of the geography of the North Polar regions in the inset is discussed in detail in Legend 6 and in the minor texts of Sheet 13. Mercator accepts that a 14th-century English friar had employed magic arts to survey the septentrional regions. The four channels carry the sea towards the pole where it disappears into an abyss with great force. Mercator accepted current beliefs in the existence of a large southern continent Terra Australis, beliefs which would prevail until the discovery of the open seas south of Cape Horn and the circumnavigation of Australia. His biographer, Walter Gimm, explained that even though Mercator was not ignorant that the Austral continent still lay hidden and unknown, he believed it could be "...demonstrated and proved by solid reasons and arguments to yield in its geometric proportions, size and weight, and importance to neither of the other two, nor possibly to be lesser or smaller, otherwise the constitution of the world could not hold together at its centre." Beyond Europe the interiors of the continents were unknown but Mercator struggled to combine the scattered data at his disposal into a harmonious whole in the map legends which speculate on the Asian Prester John and the courses of the Ganges, Nile and Niger. For his geographical information Mercator quotes legends 3, 4, 8, 11, 14 classic authors such as Pliny the Elder, Pomponius Mela, Ptolemy, and earlier travelers such as Marco Polo but, as the principal geographer of his time, he would have undoubtedly have been in touch with contemporary travelers. Topic. Navigational inaccuracy. 
Mercator was not a navigator himself and, while he was obviously aware of the concept of rum line, he missed several key practical aspects of navigation. As a result, his world map was useless for navigation at the time it was created because navigation was something very different from his idealized concept. Mercator had to work from the geographic information contained in his source maps, which of course was not always accurate, but he may have also introduced errors of his own by misinterpreting the mathematical structure of the Portuguese and Spanish charts of his time. In addition, even if his sources had been perfect, Mercator's map would have still been of little practical use for navigators due to lack of reliable data on magnetic declination and to the difficulty of determining longitude accurately at sea. These technical reasons explain why Mercator's projection was not widely adopted for marine charts until the 18th century. Topic. Decorative features The ornate border of the map shows the 32 points of the compass. The cardinal appoints appear in various forms, west is Zephyrus, Oxides, west, Ponente, Oeste, east is Subsola, Orions, Ost, Levante, Este, south is Oster, Meridio, Zuya Ostre, Sid, north is Boreas, Septentrio, Nord, Tramontana. All of the other 28 points are written only in Dutch, confirming Mercator's wish that his map would be put to practical use by mariners. Within the map Mercator embellishes the open seas with fleets of ships, sea creatures, of which one is a dolphin, and a striking god-like figure which may be Triton. The unknown continental interiors are remarkably devoid of creatures and Mercator is for the most part content to create speculative mountain ranges, rivers and cities. The only land animal, in South America, is shown as having under the belly a receptacle in which it keeps its young warm and takes them out but to suckle them. 40 degrees south, 295 degrees east with text. He also shows cannibals but this may have been true. The giants shown in Patagonia may also be founded in truth, the reaction of Spanish sailors of slight stature on confronting a tribe of natives who were well over six foot in height. These images of South Americans are almost direct copies of similar figures on the hashtag world and regional maps before 1569 map of Diego Gutierrez. There are three other images of figures. Prester John in Ethiopia, 10 degrees north, 60 degrees east. A tiny vignette of two flute players, 72 degrees north, 170 degrees east. See text. The Zolotaya Baba at 60 degrees north, 110 degrees east. Zolotaya Baba may also may be found on the Mercator map of the North Pole near the right border at mid height. The italic script used on the map was largely developed by Mercator himself. He was a great advocate of its use, insisting that it was much clearer than any other. He published an influential book, Literarum Latinorum, showing how the italic hand should be executed. Topic. Texts of the map Topic. Summary of the legends Legend 1 The dedication to his patron, the Duke of Cleves. Legend 2 A eulogy, in Latin hexameters, expressing his good fortune at living in Cleves after having fled from persecution by the Inquisition. Legend 3 Inspectori salutum, greetings to the reader. Mercator sets forth three motivations for his map, one, an accurate representation of locations and distances corrected for the use of sailors by the adoption of a new projection, two, an accurate representation of countries and their shapes, three, to stay true to the understanding of ancient writers. Legend 4 The Asian Prester John and the Origin of the Tartars Legend 5 The Prime Meridian and how a logical choice could be made on the basis of a study of magnetic declination. Legend 6 The North Polar Septentrinal Regions. 
Legend 7 Magellan Circumnavigation of the World Legend 8 The Niger and Nile Rivers and their possible linkage Legend 9 Vasco da Gama Legend 10 The use of the Organum Directorium, the diagram of courses, for the measurement of rum line distance. Legend 11 The southern continent Terra Australis and its relation to Java. Legend 12 The distinction between great circles and rum lines and the measurement of the latter. Legend 13 The 1493 papal bull arbitrating on the division between Spanish and Portuguese spheres of influence. Legend 14 The Ganges and the geography of Southeast Asia. Legend 15 The copyright notice. Topic: <inaudible> Legend texts. The following literal translations are taken with permission of the International Hydrographics Board from the Hydrographics Review. The Latin text differs from that of Mercator in using modern spelling. Punctuation has been modified or added. Paragraph breaks have been added where required. Topic: <laughs> Minor texts. Topic: Bibliography Bagro, Leo, 1985, History of Cartography, Geschichte der Kartographie, Second Ed, Chicago. Calcoin, Roger, et al., 1994, Le Cartographe Gerard Mercator 1512-1594, Credit Communal Belgique, ISBN 978-2-87193-202-4 Published jointly by the Royal Library of Belgium, Brussels, Planten Meritus Museum Antwerp, Musée Mercator Saint -Niklas on the occasion of the opening of the Musée Mercator de Saint Nicolas and the exhibition Exhibition Le Cartographe Gerard Mercator, 1512–1594 at the Royal Library, Demir, Chord 2012, Atlas of the World, Gerard Mercator's Map of the World 1569, Zutphen, Wahlbergpers, ISBN 9789057308375 Alves Gaspar, Joachim and Leteo, Henrique 2013, Squaring the Circle, How Mercator Constructed his projection in 1569, Amago Mundi Vol. 66, Part 1 2 1 24 2, doi 10.1080.03085694.2014.8459400 hash, U underscore YLX Walk 3 mg, inactive 14 March 2019, Gim, Walter, 159, Vita Mercatoris. Translated in Osley. Surname also spelled as Gim, Horst, Thomas, 2011, Le Monde and Cart. Gerard Mercator, 1512 to 1594, at Le Premier Atlas du Monde. Avec les reproductions and color de l'ensemble des planches de l'Atlas de Mercator de 1595, two degrees Cart. B 183rds Conserve à la Staatsbibliothek zu Berlin, Proischer Kulturbesitz, Mercatorfonds, Faximil Verlag, Gutersloh, Munich, Brussels, 400 pp, ISBN 978-90-6153-157-9 C Mercator Fonds Imhof, Dirk, et al., 1994, Le Cartographe Gerard Mercator 1512-1594, Bibliothèque Royale, Brussel, ISBN 978-28719-32024 Imhoff, Dirk, Kockelberg, Iris, Meskins, Ad, Parmentier, Jan 2012, Mercator, Exploring New Horizons, Planten Meritus Museum Antwerp, Schuten, by, ISBN 9789085866375 Caro, R.W. 
1993, Mapmakers of the 16th Century and Their Maps, published for the Newberry Library by Speculum Orbis Press, ISBN 978-0932757050 Lateo, Henrique and Alves Gaspar, Joaquim 2014, Globes, Rum Tables, and the Pre-History of the Mercator Projection, Amago Mundi, 66 180-195, doi, 10.1 1080-0308-5694.2014.9025080 Monmonier, Mark Stephen 2004, Rum Lines and Map Wars, A Social History of the Mercator Projection, Chicago, Illinois, University of Chicago Press, ISBN 978-0-226-53431-2 Osley, A.S. Mercator, A Monograph on the Lettering of Maps, etc. in the 16th Century Netherlands, with a facsimile and translation of his treatise on the Italic Hand Literarum Latinarum and a translation of Gims Vita Mercatoris, Watson Guptal New York and Faber London Renkoff, W. Editor 1962, Gerhard Mercator, 1512–1594, Festschrift Zoom 450. Gebertstag, Duisburger Forschungen, Duisburg Ruhrort, Verlag fur Wirtschaft und Kulturks one maint, extra text, authors list, link, Snyder, John P. 1993, Flattening the Earth, 2000 Years of Map Projections, University of Chicago Press, ISBN 978-0-226-76747-5 This book is an expanded version of the following article, and similar articles, in the history of Cartography. Snyder J. P. Cartography in the Renaissance in the History of Cartography, Volume 3, Part 1, p. 365. Text and translations of the legends of the original chart of the world by Gerhard Mercator issued in 1569. Hydrographics Review, 9-7-45. 1932, Van Nuhuis, J. W. 1933, Hydrographic Review, Ten Halves Van Raimdonk, J. 1869, Gerard Mercator, Sa vi et ses erves, St. Niklaus van T. Hoff, Bert and Editors of Amago Mundi, 1961, Gerard Mercator's Map of the World, 1569, in the form of an atlas in the Maritime Museum Prins Hendrik at Rotterdam, reproduced on the scale of the original. Rotterdam, S. Gravenhage, Van Het Maritium Museum Rotterdam. Publication No. 6. Supplement No. 2 to Amago Mundi. Woodward, D. and Harley J. B. 1987, The History of Cartography, Vol. 3, Cartography in the European Renaissance, University of Chicago, ISBN 978-0226907345. Topic. Further reading Topic. Map bibliography This bibliography gives lists of world and regional maps, on various projections, that Mercator may have used in the preparation of his world map. In addition there are examples of maps of the succeeding decades which did or did not use the Mercator projection. Where possible references are given to printed or online reproductions. Topic. Atlases and map collections Baron, Roderick 1989, Decorative Maps, Londo, Studio Editions, ISBN 978-1851702985 Bainton Williams, Ashley and Miles 2006, New Worlds, Maps from the Age of Discovery, London, Quirkus, ISBN 978-1905204809 Mercator 1570, Atlas of Europe. There are two online versions in the British Library, the Turning the Pages version at 3 and an annotated accessible copy at 4. 
Nordenskjeld, Adolf Erik 1897, Perry Plus, an essay on the early history of charts and sailing direction translated from the Swedish original by Francis A. Bather. With reproductions of old charts and maps, Stockholm Nordenskjeld, Adolf Erik 1889, Facsimile Atlas till Cartographians Alsta Historia English Facsimile Atlas to the Early History of Cartography with reproductions of the most important maps printed in the 15 and 16 centuries translated from the Swedish by J. A. Ekeloff and C. R. Markham, Krauss Reprint Corporation and New York Dover Publications London Constable 1973, ISBN 978-048 Six two two nine six four five. Shirley, Rodney W. 2001, the Mapping of the World, Early Printed World Maps 1472-1700 4 ed., Riverside, Con, Early World Press, ISBN 978-0970351807 Ptolemy, Claudius 1990, Cosmography, Leicester, Magna, ISBN 978-1854221032. The Maps of the Codex Lat VF.32, a 15th-century manuscript in the National Library, Naples. Topic. World Maps before 1569 Germanus, Henricus Martellus, c. 1489, in Nordenskjeld Perry Plus, p. 123, and Bagro, Table 40. De la Cosa, 1, 1500, Nordenskjeld Perry Plus, Plate XLIII. Ribeiro, Diego, Nordenskjeld Plates XLVIII XLIX. Apianus, Nordenskjeld Perry Plus, Plate XLIV. Gastaldi, Giacomo, Nordenskjeld Perry Plus, p. 165, also in Shirley Plate 92, entry 107. Gastaldi, Giacomo, 1546, Universale Shirley Plate 72, entry 85. Cabot, Sebastian, 1544, World Map Shirley Plate 69, entry 81. Ruiz, Johann, Nordenskjeld Facsimile Atlas, Plate 32. Phineas, Orontius, Nordenskjeld Facsimile Atlas, Plate XLI. Mercator, Gerardus, 1538, Nordenskjeld Facsimile Atlas, Plate XLIII. Shirley Plate 79, Entry 74 and 91. Ortelius, Abraham, 1564, Nova Totius Terrarum Orbis Shirley Plate 97, Entry 114. Topic: Regional maps before 1569. Mercator, Gerardus, 1554, Map of Europe. Gastaldi 1561, Map of Asia Nordenskjeld Perry Plus, Plates Liv, LV, LVI. Gastaldi 1564, Map of Africa Nordenskjeld Perry Plus, Plates XLVI. Gutierrez 1562, Map of South America Bagro, Plate 86. Topic. World maps using the Mercator projection after 1569 Hondius 1596. Henricus Hondius II 1606. Hondius 1608. Wright 1599. Quat 1608. Dudley 1646. Bleu, William Janzoon, 1606, Nova Totius Terrarum Orbis Geographica AC Hydrography Vitabula. Printed in New Worlds, page 59.